Allogeneic transplant in myeloma has been um, investigated for a long time and of course it's a very effective intervention in other diseases such as acute leukemia. In myeloma it has hit several challenges um, for um, one reason that it has been challenging is that patients do encounter a lot of toxicity and especially in the early trials or in the early um, attempts of actually performing allogeneic transplant in myeloma, many patients unfortunately died just to toxicity of the intervention. This has improved, um, but one of the findings of more recent attempts to do allogeneic transplant in myeloma um, is that patients unfortunately still relapse, although they're undergoing quite an intensive treatment which can have long-term toxicities. So, Allogenic transplant uh, is considered anyway only for young and reasonably fit patients and that's not the majority of the patient population with myeloma. But of course myeloma is a serious disease um, as far as we know at the moment. Um, it is not really um, curable with the current treatments that are around, although many of these treatments are very effective. Uh, and especially of course if a young person gets a diagnosis of myeloma, um, the, the prospect of that is, is, is very serious. So allogeneic transplant is one of the discussions that one has with young patients, um, especially below the age of 50, as to whether it makes sense. Um, and one has to say it's very difficult to predict um, as to which patients do benefit. Um, there have been different discussions uh, about whether within the group of young patients, specifically patients that have genetics that are associated with um, bad outcomes should be considered for transplant um, or whether generally all patients that are young and fit might be considered um, candidates. Um, the data that we have so far uh, is I think a bit mixed about especially these high-risk patients. We do know from other diseases with very recent data that patients that have high-risk cytogenetics for example with acute leukemia are not necessarily the ones that are benefiting most but maybe patients that are in these diseases falling in a kind of intermediate risk group. So factors that are not making the disease immediately refractory, but that lead to the disease just coming a little bit back earlier than in other patients. Um, now, one challenge in myeloma is that the risk groups are not that clearly defined at the moment. There isn't really a very unified uh, risk classification to really predict risk, although there are certain, uh, there are several classifiers around. So I think it is a challenge and it remains a challenge with um, the current data as to whether to recommend or not recommend with a young patient uh, whether allogeneic transplant is really the right choice. It needs a lot of discussion, it needs a lot of explaining about the potential risks but also the potential benefits of this intervention and ultimately it's a decision I think that in the context of what we know about it really has to be really essentially driven by the patient and an and informed decision has to be made by the patient.